Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, this is Kim Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So as for today's video, I bring you a video of how to overclock and get more FPS on the RTX 3050, so NVIDIA RTX 3050. In this case, it is the Gigabyte Gaming OC model, I believe. And well, in case you're new to this channel, um, I must tell you that I have lots of other videos like these ones. I have some videos on the RTX 3050, for example, some GPU comparisons, 25 games on the RTX 3050. Um, I also have lots of overclocking and undervolting tutorials also for the RTX 3060 and for all other AMD cards, the cards that I have of course, the 6600 XT, 6500 XT, 6600, 6700 XT, 6800 and so on so on so on. So if you have one of these cards you can watch those videos as well. But before going into the actual overclocking, let's go to the common questions. Common questions. Now for the first question, will this void my warranty? No, no, it won't void your warranty. They can't even prove that you overclocked, okay? They can't. It's something done via software and they can't prove that you overclocked and they can't, even, even if you actually manage to burn your GPU, even like doing stupid things, they would most likely not be able to prove that you broke your GPU, okay? It may just have broken, it may have a, a PS, you may have a PSU uh, defect and it just burned the, the GPU so they can't even prove, so no, it won't void your warranty, okay? Second question, is this safe? Yes. yes. I wouldn't be showing you a video uh, of how to overclock your card if it wasn't safe, okay? Your card won't burn, uh, your card won't, br won't break, uh, the performance will be better, maybe with some more degrees and some more power draw, but the performance will be better. And yes, like I told you before, uh, you are safe. Your card won't break. And the third and last question, will this work on my Gigabyte? Will this work on my EVGA? What brand are you using? You're using Gigabyte. If doesn't matter the brand. It is still an RTX 3050, okay? It is still an RTX 3050, doesn't matter if it is from EVGA, Zotac, if it is from Gigabyte, MSI, uh, it doesn't matter the brand, Asus, whatever, okay? It will work on your card. All cards are different, and I repeat, all cards are different. So if you buy 10 EVGA GPUs, for example, all of them will have different overclocking capabilities, okay? Some will push further than you think, and some will push a bit lower values, okay? That's how it works, it is the luck of the draw. So it doesn't matter the cooling system, these results will most likely, and this procedure will definitely work on your card if it is an RTX 3050. Now, to the actual overclocking part, we're gonna use the MSI Afterburner. For the AMD cards, I use the inbuilt overclocking tool on the Radeon software, but since we don't actually have that on the Nvidia side, they just don't want to do it. We, we are going to do it on the uh, MSI Afterburner, okay? The first thing that you have to do if you don't have the MSI Afterburner is go to the search bar and search for it. Bam, and it is literally the first one on your Google search. Click on it. Close this and then download MSI Afterburner. Download it, for example, for your desktop, save it. Close or minimize your browser, open the zip folder, extract it, bam, and then just double click and run it, okay? After you have it ins installed, you'll have an icon here or you can simply go here to the, to the search bar once again and search for MSI Afterburner. Open it and bam. This is how it will look, as you can see. Um, 516.40 and Nvidia GeForce RTX 3050. So this may appear difficult, but it is actually pretty easy, okay? The first thing that I always advise is the power limit. If you actually want 
to overclock your GPU and have better performance out of the box, the power limit is a must. So you put the power limit to the max you can get. In this case, in this particular in this particular model, the Gigabyte Gaming OC model, I have a max power limit of 126. Depending on your model, you may have like 110%, 150%, 115%. It depends on your model. If you have EVGA, uh, MSI, ASUS, the power limit will depend on the quality on the quality of the model, okay? But the first thing that you need to do is that power limit to the max you have available because this doesn't mean that the GPU will automatically consume more power. It just means that the GPU will consume more power if it needs more power out of the box to perform better. Some models will come severely power restricted and just putting the power limiter to the max, the power limit to the max, will avoid those restrictions in terms of power draw and the GPU, even without any kind of overclocking, will perform better, okay? That's how things work. As for the core clock, the core clock is a bit tricky. I advise you to start, for example, at plus 100 because almost all models do 100 megahertz plus on the on the core so we have the core and the memory clock the memory clock is not your ram clock over uh, obviously it's your vram clock okay so we have 100 megahertz here start with that open a game don't use any frame limiters nor v-sync just open a heavy game like for example um like for example control cyberpunk 2077 is also a good game to test forza horizon 5 Assassin's Creed Valhalla is actually a very good game to test stability, so if you have it, you can just play it without any frame limiters, okay? Uh, test at plus 100. If the game does not crash after some time, then you're stable. Then you go, for example, plus 125. Test again. If it is stable, you can go once again to plus 150. If it is still stable, 175. If it is still stable, 200 megahertz. In my case, my model, I didn't have much luck and my model isn't that great in terms of of the um, of the binding of the GPU binding, so the max I can go is 125. As soon as I go over 125, things get messy, I will start getting crashes, games will just randomly uh, go to desktop, quit to desktop, uh, I'll have green screens and so on, and that is due to the core clock. Okay, the max I can do is 125 megahertz stable plus 125. So you may be able to do 100, 150, 175 or even 200 because like I told you, all cards are different and uh, your card may have a better binning than mine. It happens, may have a bit worse, but most likely will have a bit better one, okay? As for the memory clock, it is the same. I advise you to start at 500. You don't need to start at 100, 200, 300, or even 400, because 500 is a pretty stock value where you can start with, because almost all RTX 3050 cards will do at least plus 500 on the, on the VRAM, okay? Now, the max limit that I found for my card is plus 900. If I go to 950, if I go to 1000, it will crash in a matter of minutes. So it will play, it, for example, Cyberpunk 2077, it will play for around five minutes and after, after that the computer will crash and that is due to this, the memory clock. If I apply plus 900, I can play all the time, every time I want and I won't have a single crash meaning that it is stable. If I go over plus 900, as I tested, after some minutes, if, if it isn't five minutes, it will be 10 or 15, but the game and the computer will crash. My advice is to start at 500 and then raise every 50 megahertz. So 550, apply. Test once again. If the game doesn't crash, like, let's say like after half an hour, go to 600. If it doesn't crash, go once again to 650 and continuously do that till you reach your maximum stable values. Most cards, although, will do 800. 500 is, is, that, is that limit where all cards will do it, but most cards will do at least 800. Some will do 900 like mine and some will even go to 1000 or 1100, okay? That's a possibility you may have 
a bit more luck of the draw than me and you may be able to achieve 1000 or 1100 megahertz but as for me 900 megahertz it is these are my stable values as for the core voltage you want to leave it at at zero because core voltage is a different thing core voltage may be able to let you uh, overclock your gpu a bit more but what can actually hurt your, your GPU, what can actually burn your GPU or degrade your GPU is the core voltage. So I advise you to let the core voltage at zero. This alone, the core clocks and the fan power limits and so on will be more than enough to get more juice out of your 3050. Now I could go even further and show you, for example, the Curve Editor, where you can actually undervolt your GPU and get the same performance with lower voltage ends lower temperatures and lower power draw but on radiant settings it is just pretty easy to use you just go there insert the values lower values and the gpu will undervolt as for the um, as for the ms afterburner it will be a little confusing uh for people for newbies basically for newbie for newbies it would be confusing and since this tutorial is aimed at new users at newbies it doesn't really make sense to to show at least now to show how the voltage and the curve editor works but basically this is how you undervolt your gpu uh with ms afterburner even for me it is a bit confusing and i think that msi could actually make it way way easier to use than it is uh i don't know why they don't do it but i mean it is what it is so for now just stay with these values plus 100 to start with and on the memory clock plus 500 to start with and you're gonna be fine so guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video if this video helped you in some way. Also, leave your comment in the comment section if you have some doubts and leave your comment in the comment section telling me which values uh, were you able to achieve, okay? Tell me if you could actually achieve higher values than my card or if you could not achieve it even these values that I'm showing you right now, okay? I really want to know, so leave your results in the comment section. Also, after this, we'll actually have a side-by-side -side comparison of the GPU at stock and overclocked for you to see the performance that we could actually draw out of this card just by overclocking a bit. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.